a lady came out to say her friend, who was about to get married, found out she was pregnant and she was considering abortion because she's married to a youth leader. She was about to get married to a youth leader. And while it was just a month to the pregnancy, the advice was at first, and you could try and hide the pregnancy into the wedding. But they said the church does pregnancy tests mm -hmm. the day, a few days to the wedding, just to be sure you're not pregnant. So it seemed like the only option for this young lady to do is to carry out abortion. And here we are discussing why would, we've heard these stories before. I've heard it, I've heard it before. I've heard people say that they did abortion just because they wanted to get married. I've heard other kinds of stories and the conversation is, is it right? Should we commit a sin to hide a sin? And to what length are we going to go to look right, you know, in the face of others? See, the churches, most churches have doctrines and it's clearly stated. So if you know, if you participate, if you're part of a church, you know what their doctrine says about being married and not being pregnant or being pregnant. So you know exactly what is expected of you. And I guess also as a youth leader, you're part of, you know, how the church runs. So you more than anyone else, you know exactly what is expected. Um, and I, and it's important that we understand why the church made this compulsory. So first of all, I'm like, okay, if it's just a few, um, if it's just like a month, she'll be able to have the wedding without it being noticeable. But then I guess why the church would um, insist on doing a test a few days to the wedding will be that there may be cases where people have gotten away with being pregnant and getting married. Meanwhile, those who their own show are the ones punished. So because mm -hmm. I don't see yours, you're not going to be sort of, I don't, I'm not punished, but that does not affect you. Mm -hmm. But someone else, but all of you have committed the same sin, but one person's only showing and the other one is not showing. So I guess for that, it's just to keep it fair, to say, okay, we'll do it to uh, a few days before the actual event so that, you know, no, um, not a, a particular person doesn't get unfair, um, you know, like an unfair advantage. Now, um, if you know that you've done something, everything we do has a consequence, it has repercussions. Just be willing, just be ready to accept the consequence of your action and the repercussions for it, which is I will not be able to do this wedding in church. I would rather, I know what I've done wrong, and so I will do it outside church. And I hear some of these um, marriages, you may not do it in church, but they'll come and bless it for you. You can come, like a, if it's a Saturday wedding on a Sunday, you come and bless it for you. Because in the end, it's not about ticking the box of we appeared here and we mm. did it here. It's a lot more than those appearances. It's about, it's about the marriage itself. And so if that is important to you, if you understand the importance of that, you would not be thinking of, um, you know, doing an abortion to, to save face. I think the members of the church here are to blame, not the institution of that church. They are subscribers to that institution. They were mm. groomed there. The man himself, um, or the fiancé himself, is um, a youth pastor, youth leader, someone who says one thing, lives by another standard, so double standards, and then... Sex, obviously, is something that the church frowns upon before, but then, marriage. before marriage, but then both of them had it and now they're considering abortion. So they are the ones at fault here. People always live by these standards that, you know, they create and then they come out with do not judge kind of excuses. You are the one who went to that church, you subscribe to that church, you must live by what you believe. Mm. You must live by what you believe. That institution is an institution and is allowed to have its laws and rules that guides the subscribers or the followers mm. And, you know, for whatever reason the institution believes in. If you found, if you, you've been found, you know, um, guilty of, uh, of violating any of these rules of that institution, you live with the consequence of it. So now that you are pregnant outside the wedlock, be, honest you know, enough. courageous and honest enough mm -hmm. to admit mm -hmm. it publicly and you step the out of the system. Go hmm. to a registry, don't kill your child, get married, but step out of the system. If this was done as a mistake if this was a mistake that was done you was mm. you you would know by the remorse they would show and by the way they would accept to take the consequences when we are not perfect people will fall when you fall and you're remorseful about the fall you will take the consequences with your full chest mm. you would want to take you will be the one asking for the penance because you know that god this isn't me 
I mm. fail. Mm. I'm ready for the consequences. You will see it. You will not see them be plotting abortion. So that showed me that it has been happening. They were just caught in the cross lines. But um, this also sh points to the hypocrisy of what we have when it comes to religion. A lot of people preach something different and do something different. And when they are caught in the cross lines like this, they start looking for an easy way out. And I had uh, someone close back in the day who was caught exactly, when I saw the situation, I was like, yeah, I remember this person, <laughs> exactly like this. And unfortunately, she did the abortion so that she could wed in church. I'm sorry to say, it doesn't mean that people who do abortions don't give birth to babies. But till today, she doesn't have a child. I'm mm. not even joking. Somebody, to, somebody so mentioned something similar. It could have been that too. that mm. was the only child she was meant to have. Mm. But because she didn't want to, she wanted the safe the shame. face. She didn't, the shame. She didn't want to just take the consequence. I've, I've fallen. I'm sorry. Okay, since people are not going to wed me in church again, let me do the court or do the traditional and just move on with mm. my life. And maybe after a while, people will accept me back into the fold. So the punishment the church or the mm. you know, religious bodies give is not to ostracize you for the rest of your life. They keep you on a bench. When mm. you fall as a priest, you are kept on a bench to observe.